Okay, we're live. Okay, hello and welcome to everyone. My name is Abir and I am an intern at Africa for Palestine. For those of you who are not familiar with us, we focus on strengthening African-Palestinian relations and pushing back against apartheid Israel's infiltration and influence into the African continent. We work with solidarity groups, trade unions, political formations, and human rights organizations across the African continent who have our same spirit of progressive internationalism and commitment to standing with the oppressed people of the world. And today is a very, very special day for all of those um, in South Africa, happy Mandela Day. Uh, today is a day that we celebrate Nelson Mandela and especially for our organization, uh, we always uh, want to uplift uh, Mandela's commitment um, towards Palestine from the very beginning. Um, and we are very honored today to have with us Parliament member Ahmed Manzoor Sheikh Imam. Imam is part of the National Freedom Party who were instrumental in initiating a motion to downgrade the South African Embassy in Israel. Uh, so welcome, uh, Sheikh Imam, how are you? Very well, thank you very much and thank you for having me on your, and uh, yes indeed, I'm fine and uh, I hope all our listeners are well out there and you yourself as well. Thank you, we're, we're very, very honored to have you today and to be speaking about parliament, uh, especially on a historic day like this uh, to talk about South Africa's continued legacy of supporting Palestine. Um, but before we go into the parliament, just tell us a little bit about yourself and the work that you do. Well, uh, you know, let me start. My name is Ahmed Manzoor Sheikh Imam. I'm actually a member of parliament uh, in different portfolio committees, health, police, standing committee on appropriations. I'm also a founding member of the National Freedom Party. Unfortunately, you know, my lead has had a massive stroke some years ago, and that's having an effect on the party. But I've been involved in a lot of community, uh, with a lot of community activities. I've been the chairperson of Crisis Care Line and things. So, you know, it's, 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 but in parliament, my responsibility is one of them as one of the members of the 400 uh, in the National Assembly is to hold the executive to account. Okay, great. Um, thank you for that. Um, just to get us to know a little bit about you. Um, and uh, it's, you know, for me, it's especially interesting that you're actively part of parliament. Um, and that's really the focus of the talk today. We, we want to know about parliament. And before we go into the question of Palestine, I just want to ask a broad question. How does parliament actively and effectively influence foreign policy? All right, let, uh, before I go there, if you, if, you know, I just want to, do, uh, it's a very special day. It's an international day. We are trying to remember our former icon, the late uh, Nelson Mandela. And I want to quote his words, uh, which he said very, very loud and clear. We know too well that our freedom is incomplete without the freedom of Palestinians. So, you know, uh, uh, um, so, you know, and, and that always lingers in, in my mind, the role uh, 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 the, the wise words of a former icon. And mm. I think that is what gives me the motivation and the courage and the strength to be, one, uh, to be able to continuously uh, uh, and not only influence the decision of parliament, but very importantly advocate uh, 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 for processes to be put in place so that we could deal with the plight of the Palestinian people. So uh, uh, if we come back to the issue of, of parliament, uh, uh, you know, we belong to different committees. We have mm -hmm. the responsibility of bringing in motions from time to time. We are able to deliberate in the different, like particularly if you take the issue of Palestine, which is, which is an international issue. Yes. And when we have the debates and declarations on international relations, we bring these things up. We are allowed to bring in substantive motions or matters for debate that of interest to the country and internationally. So there are various mechanisms in which we could influence the decision of parliament, particularly, and in this instance, South Africa is, 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 is the one country who know and understand better than anybody else what it is to have your human rights violated. So it makes yes. it a lot easier for us to advocate for, for, for a certain policy direction in terms of Palestine and anyone that is oppressed anywhere in the world. Okay, great. Um, I actually wanted to, to ask you about this because um, I'm, I'm interested on, on how uh, you are able and other parliament members are able to influence the foreign policy and what gets focused on 
Um, and you mentioned this quote by Mandela and how South Africa, um, more than anyone, you know, can, can empathize and understand the plight of the oppressed. Um, but specifically on the question of Palestine, I'm just interested in, in all of parliament, do you feel like everybody and, and all the members of parliament know of the historical cooperation between Palestine and South Africa during apartheid? Um, well, and is it significant in the, in the decision making? Well, I indeed, you know, I, I, I must admit that I think uh, as parliament, and we have a responsibility uh, and based on, on, on the divide and rule policy that exists internationally, to be able to communicate with the people, the masses in the respective countries that you come from. And yes. uh, indeed, you know, let us not forget the role uh, the former leader, the Palestinian liberation organized leader, Yasser Arafat played in the liberation of South Africa and, yes. and, and his relationship with our former icon Nelson Mandela. And, 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 and that alone, you understand, was for the sole purpose, not of wanting anything in return, but to, he accepted and understood the plight of South Africans, what it was to be, uh, your human rights to be violated, to be removed from your properties, your land to be taken away, not to be treated as normal human beings. So indeed, that relationship of South Africa and Palestine goes back years. And, and, and we cannot forget the role that Palestinian people and Palestinian leadership particularly played in the liberation of yes. South Africa. But very importantly, I want to uh, 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 bring this to your attention. We must also not forget that whilst the Palestinian Authority and its people stood by us side by side, there were countries like Israel who did everything in their power to ensure that those sanctions were broken and violated and worked with the apartheid regime of South Africa. So we must not forget that as well. Yes, no, thank you. Thank you for bringing that up. Um, and speaking of this continued uh, connection with Palestine and yet this, this opposition um, that was historical from Israel to South Africa, uh, I wanted to bring up an, uh, an incident. So in 2007, uh, sorry, 2017, Israel sent a delegation of its own parliamentarians to South Africa for a dialogue, but the South African parliament refused to entertain them. So do you feel like this was a positive message to Israel? What, what do you think this message was to Israel about South African parliament not normalizing relations with them? Indeed, it is a positive step. You are saying to the people of Israel and its leadership and its parliamentarians, that you can't violate somebody's human rights and want to come and enter into dialogue with us. And so the message that the South African government gave to the Israelis loud and clear, we cannot sit at the same table with you until you respect human rights, until you give back to the Palestinian people what is rightfully theirs. You do not have the right to come here and want to negotiate or discuss with us anything because what is there to discuss? It is clear that what you are doing is violating the human rights of the Palestinian people, number one. You have taken what is rightfully theirs. Give back to them if you want to come and sit and talk. Let's level the playing field. But you can't come here and want to negotiate with us and discuss and enter into dialogue whilst you're oppressing the people of Palestine. So I think yes. the message that, that was given to them was loud and clear. Remember that if we entertain them, it was as if you were recognizing them you know, and, and their wrongdoings, and you are accepting that they have a right to be where they are, and clearly they are not. Yes. And, and speaking of this recognition, um, I wanted to ask you, because uh, I mentioned earlier that the National Freedom Party was instrumental in um, pushing forward this, uh, um, uh, the, the lessening of activity with the embassy in uh, the mm -hmm. South African embassy in Israel. So can you actually tell us about how that happened and what you were pushing forward? Well, well, you know, uh, uh, let me start off by saying what is happening in Palestine is totally unacceptable. No law abiding nation anywhere in the world can sit back and accept what is happening in Palestine. And many countries are supporting the stance and the actions that is being taken. Yes. So. Remember, uh, the National Freedom Party, led by myself and my leader, has always said that 
the Israeli government must comply with the regulations, the agreements that were entered in, and give back rightfully what belongs to the Palestinian people. I then put in a motion in Parliament calling for the South African, for South Africa to take action against Israel. And remember that the ANC government, which is ruling today, also took a unanimous resolution in their conference again, that, that they will take action against Israel and downgrade the South Africans. So I put in a motion yes. calling for downgrading as a first step to downgrade the South African embassy in Israel to a liaison office. Now that motion has been put in, unfortunately, you know, because we are certain smaller parties, we have less, uh, we follow yes. a rotational system. It did not come in. It would have come in early this year. Unfortunately, the lockdown is coming, but it is on the order paper. It will come in. I, I, when it, uh, you know, after a certain period of time, your motions expire, you have to now put them back in. I have done that as well. So it is going to come. But let me also say, in the meantime, what South Africa has done is called back its ambassador. Mm. So we don't have an ambassador there in Israel. So what we want to do, and remember, this is only going to be a first step. After we downgrade that, eventually, we want to have full sanctions against Israel. And we're calling the international community to support that until Israel complies with all international law and gives back to the Palestinian people what is rightfully theirs. Yes. No, that is, uh, that's just amazing. Uh, the, the foresight of putting in that motion. And this is not like, you know, this is just the minimum of what you are seeking. You know, this is, this is only the beginning of the ending diplomatic relations with Israel. Uh, and I want to ask you more about that because I want to ask you about how your party and then other people in parliament can hold the executive accountable on Palestine. So you mentioned, um, you know, these sanctions. So, so what more can we do to end diplomatic relations with Israel? Um, how can Parliament go forward? And what do you need for that to happen? Well, first of all, let me say that many political parties, there's 14 of us parties that are represented in the National Assembly. And many of them are supporting the stance of South Africa breaking all diplomatic ties with Israel. In fact, we will go further to say that we should not allow any Israeli company to do business in South Africa either. So, you know, there's a lot of measures that we want to put in place. And, and, and let, let us be mindful of one thing, one thing, and that is, it is the sanctions that brought the previous South African government to its knees, which yes. resulted in them acceding to the negotiations that took place. If we did not go that route, despite many countries supporting it, there were those that were opposing it, and there were countries like Israel, and Switzerland was one of them, where they were colluding with the apartheid regime. So let us not forget about that. But yeah. very importantly, it is these mechanisms. Now, when you come to parliament and the executive, first of all, if you look at it from a political perspective, they've taken a unanimous resolution. They have a right and, and, you know, to implement that resolution that was taken. That's the first thing. But when it comes to the executive, the fact that it is in the order paper, the matter must come before the House. It has to be deliberated and a decision taken there. It is us as members of parliament representing the different parties who take a mandate from the people on the ground, who know and understand what we've gone through in this country Yes. that must now push for these executive to hastily, if that's the term I must use, implement this resolution or these motions so that that action is effective and that brings Israel to its knees so that they can start complying. And unless the executive takes that seriously, and I must admit that government is taking it seriously, uh, 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 and, and they are, in fact, I have posed the question to the president repeatedly, every time he's appeared before us, and he's also given us the assurance they are trying to get the logistics in place, obviously, yes. because there will be certain challenges, and we understand that. But again, we are saying that you cannot be unduly delaying this process, because any further delay will allow the Israelis to continue oppressing the people in Palestine, and that cannot be accepted. Yes. Can, can you actually uh, explain to us some of the challenges 
that um, whether it's the executive or other members of parliament face in supporting this? You know, why is there not unanimous support? Very simple, the world around is dictated by two things. And the most important thing, of course, is money and resources. People, you know, I can tell you now, if you listen to one of my, 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 the debates that took place in the house, and when there were certain political parties that were opposing it, and I said, so why? Are you, it means, is it mean that you have sold your soul? It's because you're getting some financial gain or some financial resources? Because where's the principle and where's the value? Remember, the issue of Palestine is nothing to do with the religion. There are Muslims, there are Christians, and everybody yes. living on that area who have the rightful uh, a right to exist there. This is their land. So it is nothing to do with religion. So if you get political parties that don't want to support it, then the question is, where's your values? Where's your principles? Where's your morals? And that's the question I ask them. And is are you driven by financial gain? Is it because remember, whatever happens in the world, it is based on a divide and rule principle. So what yes. happens? People will pay you, people will fund you. And that is why you have political parties who have an interest based on what they are getting out of it rather than putting first the human rights issue. If any part of political party puts human rights issues first, put and, and see what is happening in, in, in Palestine, then they will indeed support this because it's nothing to do with religion. So let us yes. remember, that the, 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 the entire world, the, the, the major problem in, in the world started when religion was being used to divide the people. Yes. Now that the colonialism started, they used religion as a means to divide people. Otherwise, there is no problem between Muslims and Christians. In there is not. It is politicians and political parties, the heads of government that create this division. So likewise, in this country, it is loud and clear. If you saw what actually happened in the Western Cape, for instance, we said we had a water crisis with a contract being awarded to Israel where political parties were going to be getting paid for hundreds of millions of rands for election purposes, which are highlighted in parliament. So how would you expect them to want to support the struggle of the Palestinian people if you get yes. funded by Israel? And that's where the problem is your interest which is more important than the lives of those people. Yes. In yes. And I actually just wanted to ask you something. This wasn't in the, the questions that I sent you, um, but I, I find it so inspiring, um, just the commitment that the South African parliament and government has towards Palestine. And I'm a, I'm, I'm a student in South Africa currently, but I grew up in the United States and this is completely different than what we see within uh, the United States government, and of course, many Western governments who, uh, uh, you know, there, there's very little to none support for Palestine. In fact, people will be labeled and canceled different, you know, because they support Palestine. Um, but, and I feel like, of course, this is because of the interest and there's also a lot of propaganda. So I was interested to know, especially with the recent um, uh, issue with the, with the chief judge, here in South Africa, do you feel like there's propaganda that influences people in parliament, uh, people in the government on Israel? Well, let me start off by saying, very little has changed in South Africa in terms of the economy is concerned. The media is controlled by a handful of people. The food trade is, is controlled by a few people. The motor vehicle trade, the mining industry, the financial institutions are all controlled by a few. Now, let me tell you, the media plays a pivotal role in South Africa in causing division as well in South Africa. Yes. And, 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 and promoting a certain interest of certain countries and certain interests. I'm not surprised with what I hear about the United States of America. In fact, there'll be no peace anywhere in the world until the international community and international nations come together united to ensure that no country in the world, no nation, has superpower status that will be able to go in there and, and allow any country to violate the human rights of anyone. Yes. Now, in South Africa, media is playing a major role when it comes to that. And let me tell you some of the things they are saying. It's going to affect the economy. People are going to withdraw their monies. People are going to do this. There'll be no investment in the country. A whole lot of things. But is the media giving you a balanced approach to it? No. Are they giving you any other solutions? No. 
Are they highlighting the pilots, uh, uh, the pl uh, uh, plight of the Palestinian people? No. How often do you see in the South African media that they are telling you about what is happening in Palestine? You are getting it through Facebook and social media, and then you're letting it down. But do you find the South African media publishing that? Clearly, no. Why? Now, let's go back into who, the, who owns the media in South Africa, who has control over the media in South Africa, and who has control over these financial institutions in South Africa, who has control over the entire uh, automotive trade in South Africa. So these are the questions we need to be asking also. And it is for that reason that you will never get balanced reporting in South Africa. Now, mm -hmm. remember with the stance that the South African government took, which is remarkable because they know and understand where we come from in terms of apartheid and how we were oppressed and violently our land and everything was taken away. Even right now, if you see, when we want to deal with the, the issue of expropriation without compensation, to give back rightfully to those people whose land was taken away. You can see the opposition that is coming and how much of publicity it's gaining in the media. But have, are you hearing anything in the media about the land that was taken away violently by people, how their rights were violated? No. So you mm -hmm. can't get balanced reporting. But what is remarkable and which I think we must appreciate is the stance of the South African government and, 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 and other political parties that know and understand. And let's be honest, there are many organizations, not only, not only Muslim organizations, Christian organizations, churches and things that have come yes. to the support of, of the Palestinian people. So, mm -hmm. so if that is the amount of people and, and the influence of certain organizations, and these are very influential organizations, let's be honest. So what are they seeing differently to what the media is seeing and certain other political parties? Seeing? It comes back to the issue of your interest, what you're getting out of it. And let me tell you, unfortunately, even in politics today, you know, if you want to do the right thing, you have enemies. If you want to do the wrong thing, you have friends. It's all about what you can get back in return. So people will sell their principles, their values and their souls because of what they can get back in return for their own selfish desires and interests not about the people of I want to say that this is not only about Palestine. We will take, and I personally and my party will take the same stance if what to do with any nation in the world whose rights are being yes. violated. Yes. Because it's the right thing to do. No, thank you. Thank you for that. I think that's a very important reminder um, to all of those uh, listening, but just to to all of us to, the, to, uh, to recommit um, to uh, being with the oppressed. And this is reviving, um, you know, what this message of Mandela and his support for Palestine, you know, all these years later, uh, we want that same commitment to continue and grow and, and just be as strong as it was. Um, so thank you for, you know, uh, explaining to us uh, what is happening right now in parliament, what, what is being pushed forward, what the future can look like of South African relations uh, in support of Palestine and in opposition to Israel. Um, and I wanted to, to end actually just on a personal note, um, uh, just a little bit about yourself and tell us, um, you know, for those who are listening, for those who are inspired by the role that you're playing right now in parliament, what led you to be involved politically in, in, par you know, in politics, in parliament, and also be so passionate about the Palestinian cause? Well, let me start off by saying I come from a family of uh, community workers. My dad, my, like I said, my grandfather was, was an imam. My, my dad, my uncles have been involved in community work. I've been chairing the crisis care line. I've been a chairperson not long ago of the human social development in the SADC parliament. But I think what is most important is them, that we have 59 million people, particularly in this country, and of course, billions worldwide. Not all of them can represent themselves. And that is why there must be people that can go out there, live, eat, sleep, talk, walk, the interests yes. of the people on the ground. And that is what must give you the motivation that you must make a difference in the lives of the people. And if you take particularly the issue, issue of Palestine, and if you look at the way their rights are being violated, how their land was taken away from them, which is rightfully belongs to them, how can we sit back now remember, I mean, how can, you call, how can you be human enough to be able to sit back on one single day and not even think or consider 
the plight of the people in Palestine and what yes. they're going through. And very importantly, because you come from a history of, 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 of abuse, you've come from a history of where your, violates, uh, your rights were violated and things. So you need to know and understand because by, uh, in my case, I'm living by example because I know what we went through. I was a little boy when I know the special branch came to visit my dad at home. You understand? Yes, I know yes. when the police said to my brother that whether it's Christmas, these were the words, Christmas Day, Boxing Day, or New Year's Day, we will find your brother. And when we find him, he won't see the outside again. So yes. I know and understand that. But what is very, very important is that the, the violation of one human right is the violation of all human rights. And we need to stand together. And that's what motivates me. When it comes to the issue of Palestine, all the people in this country, and you know, I, get, I got a call from Pakistan the other day of a girl who's having her rights being violated there. And she's a South African girl. Yes. And, it, it, and, and, and for me, it, nothing gives me greater pleasure than wanting to make a difference in the lives of the people. So if I can make a life, a difference in the lives of the Palestinian people, I believe then I have done my share in being a public representative and a member of parliament. Oh, thank you. Thank you so much for that. That's just uh, so inspiring to hear where you're coming from and the, the commitment that you hold um, for all, you know, all people who are in need of human rights. Um, I think that's a really, really great place to end. Um, I, I really appreciate this conversation. Uh, I'm sure I've learned and, and the viewers have learned so much about what's happening right now in Parliament. Is there any final words that you want to say to the audience? And specifically, there was a question about what others can do to help this cause or assist this uh, being pushed in Parliament. So any final words on that? Well, I, I, you know, I just want to quote another word by our late icon, Nelson Mandela, who said education is the most uh, uh, potential and powerful weapon which you can use to change the world. And I think what is very, very important is the role that we can play, even as individuals, even in, even in communities, to be able to get the message out, to educate other people as to what is happening in Palestine and how the people in Palestine are having their uh, human rights violated, the sufferings of the people uh, in Palestine and everywhere else in the world. So exactly here in South Africa, if we know there are people, you know, gender-based violence in South Africa is a huge problem. We should not be sitting back if you are aware that somebody out there is having their rights being violated. And if there's gender-based violence, you're supposed to bring it out in the open. There's no point in us coming out when somebody has been raped or somebody has died. We need to come out there and prevent that rape. Yes. Prevent and exactly the same thing with the issue of the people of Palestine. We need to go out there now in our masses, educate people, come together. Because if we come together in our numbers and stand together united, we can ensure that we have a more powerful, not only South Africa, but a more powerful and a more peaceful world, you know, where we can all live side by side. And the emphasis will be that there will be no inequality and no abuse of power by anyone in the world particularly allowing one nation to, 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 to violate the human rights or, 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 or marginalize or victimize others on the level of inequality, on, on poverty, on the uh, economic dependence on each other, but we should come out as one united nation. So every individual in this world has a responsibility to go and highlight the plight of the Palestinian people and any human rights violation anyway in the world so we can come yes. together you know yes wow thank you so much for this conversation uh, and thank you to everyone who has tuned in to our audience who's tuning in to africa for palestine uh, i think this was the perfect way to celebrate mandela day uh, and to celebrate the legacy of our great icon nelson mandela so thank you so much parliament member sheikh imam uh, and we hope to uh, host you again and learn more about what's happening in Parliament and how uh, Parliament continues to support Palestine. Indeed, thank you very much. And I call on all the listeners out there to keep safe and be careful. The pandemic is peaking. And indeed, you need to be safe and take the necessary precautions. Thank you very much. Thank you. Okay, everyone, have a good day.